A lot of you guys heard me talk about my own personal dating life recently, a few episodes back or so. I don't know. I lose track of what episode we're on, but, but today I am ridiculously excited because we have Barry with us, who is not just a relationship expert, not just the best-selling author, not just an inspirational speaker and spiritual guide, but who is also single. Yay! <laughs> just goes to show you can be super successful and still be looking for love. It's like it's you know you know it's a journey that we all have to go through in life. And I'm not the only one. <laughs> nope. It's always interesting, though, when I see like successful people um, or what we consider successful, you know, they have a great business, they have a great, you know, a product out there that's doing well. People seem to re be responding well to them in the public eye. And then when it, you, you take the the curtains back to their personal life, you know, they have other things going on, usually not as successful as we would think in, you know, what we consider to be happiness for most humans. So it's always interesting when someone has it all from the outside looking right. in and you're still just like, you know what? I haven't quite figured this one out for me. So Barry, I'm glad you, we have you on today because you are a best-selling author. Thank you. I mean, you seem to have it all going for yourself. So let's get into it. What is it like for you dating right now? Like, how have you been approaching it? Well, well, let me back it up a second, because the thing is, I love, I mean, I like being painted with the brush of being successful. I'm still working on some aspects in their physical, external success. Mm -hmm. Internally, I think I'm actually more successful in so many ways to have done some inner work over the years. So in some ways, I'm actually getting the outside world to match more easily. So interesting being reflected back that I'm appearing to be so successful. So thank you for that feedback. Oh, um, you're I mean, you're welcome. It's all in marketing. It's all how we present ourselves. So but also yeah. to put things on the table. Yes. You know, I've been doing it for a while. But yeah. at the beginning of my transformation work about relationships, the masculine and feminine conversation that started back in 2007, my relationships basically pretty much ended. Like I, I the, the dating was kind of messed up a bit because I wasn't really getting my feet under me properly. And when I got clear about what I'm working on, I let go of all my relationship, of any dating experience. And I dated a little bit, but the thing is that, and this is the thing about being in this business, it's very hard to find someone to date who doesn't have stuff that I can help them with. You know, the, the, uh... trap, the trap is that I don't want to be their coach, counselor, therapist. So, uh... I'm pretty clear if I want to meet somebody, they've got to have done some sort of work themselves. Not, not saying I've done necessarily, but have done their own inner work. So when we meet, we're much more on the same page. Hmm. You know, and that's one of, that's that's the that's the joy and also the challenge in this because frankly, I've because of the work I've done, I've sort of minimized, I've shrunk my dating pool availability, to be honest. Which right. is fine. Do you do you feel like you're a fixer upper? Or I mean, <laughs> is this a, it, are you attracted are to you that kind of Barry's the fixer upper or if he's attracting the fixer upper well I mean if if he's in the past if people uh, were looking towards him because they wanted him to help them with their own issues oh, while you. they're dating my question is are you the do you have the energy where you like to attract women who need help or is it just because of your profession you think you seem to just attract these kind of Actually, Dangerous. no. The, the thing is, I'm much better at, <laughs> to be honest, at deflecting them, <laughs> to be honest. But the thing is, let me tell a quick story, because um, I've had a few you know, speed bumps over the years. I did have the experience of being the savior for a period of time, because, and, and the, the joke about it was, it's back in, God, late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. I was in a seminar where being English in America, I'd only been in America like six, seven years at this point. Mm -hmm. One of the guys at the seminar called me a white knight, as a joke sort of thing. Uh then, he said, okay. then when we came, left the seminar on the Sunday evening, I, at that time, I had a brand new white Toyota Supra, like an 86 Supra. And he said, see, you've got a white, you got a white steed, you should be a white knight. So I thought, great, I'm going to put white knight as a license plate. Did that. I kept being a savior of damsels in distress for years. It sucked. Oh. So I basically decided after a while, I can't do this anymore. So then we get rid of the plate. Two weeks after I said that, my car got stolen. So that was spirit going, okay, done. And I got clear, mm. I, I can't be that in a relationship because it doesn't yeah. serve me or my partner. So no, no, no fixing or no fix up being no. fix up and ring. Uh, that's the right word. Understandable. Where are you meeting people right now? Like what 
Are you using apps? Are you just going out in person? Because you're you're in a nice size city to meet people. LA, what city are you in? I mean, LA. Yeah, LA is definitely an interesting place to be dating, to be sure. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just saying yesterday to someone. I am uh, no diss to you or anyone who's single in Los Angeles, California. But I am very grateful that I have my partner here in Los Angeles, because when I look at the dating scene, not that it's like bad or anything, I think the problem out here is there's so many choices. (laughs) It's like the supermarket now. It's like, you know, you go to the supermarket for one thing and there's like 80 different alternatives Mm -hmm. to that, that one thing. You want tea? We have 80 different brands of tea to get. It's like that in LA for people, it seems like. I would agree with you on that. The thing about it also is that's also appearance. Because mm-hmm. the, other pro- the other problem or the other part is you've got to get past that point to get to know who somebody is. And mm-hmm. for me, in the journey, yes. and to answer your question, Andrea, is it Andrea or Andrea? I'm not sure how to say it the right way. Andrea was right, yeah. Okay. But I appreciate you double checking. Because <laughs> so, some people have, you know. But the thing is, actually, the, the one I'm dating, the woman I'm dating right now, we met through a Facebook dating uh, business group. So it wasn't even on that platform. But because she's done the work, and the thing is, she's doing work with the feminine because I'm really passionate about serving the feminine in my work, we had a real good chance to meet up and talk. And it's building. It's not romantic yet. We're still exploring. We're on a couple of dates. But the thing is, this has been the most, I would say, likely opportunity because mm-hmm. we're already online going in. She's done a lot of her own work and we have a great rapport and things look really good. It may not go anywhere. I don't, I'm not being attached. I don't want to hold that space. But in the dating apps, and I am on the apps, unfortunately, it's very easy to say no. Because the thing is, the, the stuff mm-hmm. I see, and I look at the people, because frankly, just to be transparent, I'm not a 30 year old anymore. You, know, you can probably guess that. So the dating choices that I seem to get presented with most of the apps, because it's based on age, I basically don't live the age I'm supposed to be, I guess. I don't feel as old as the numbers, say, according to my birth certificate. And so mm-hmm. when I meet women who are in that same age range, they look 20 years older than me. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to notice how people will seem to give up a certain point. Men and women do this. But yes. Finding one in that pool that is, that I find is somebody who takes care of themselves is attractive, is in the same age range I'm in, is like a needle in a haystack. Can we dive into that a little bit more? Yeah, it's so interesting I wanted you say that. That age, right? Because I do think you're right. When you get onto a dating app, the first thing you see is their name, their occupation, their age. Right. And people are lying and right. left and right. Yeah. <laughs> They're lying left and right about all of those things, actually. Yeah. I when have you had, meet yeah. someone organically, if we were to meet in a coffee shop or in a bar, you'd walk up to me, say, mm-hmm. I don't know how old you are. I could guess by your right. appearance, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to base it off of the interaction that we have and you don't get that opportunity. Do you think it would be beneficial to have a dating app that doesn't have an age and just maybe has an age range? It mm-hmm. would certainly change the paradigm. And okay. I think it would in a way, because yeah, as you said, we need somebody in real life, in quotes, real life, <laughs> to meet somebody, you know, that phrase is so overused, but meeting somebody <laughs> in the physical experience of who they are versus through a virtual screen, especially when it's not even animated, so you kind of see the move. Because the other part also is, and I've said the story before, um, my spiritual community in LA is Agape. I've been going there for 28 years, 30 years, mm. Agape International Spiritual Center with Michael Beckwith. And many of ah, Michael Beckwith. Hmm. Yeah, he's been my teacher since '94, so it's been a long time. I saw he's performing many, around here. Yeah, many beautiful yeah. people go there, men and mm-hmm. women. And I remember talking to this friend of mine. I said, I saw this woman come out of a, a guppy once. She was drop dead gorgeous. She was statuesque. She was a model. She was gorgeous. But then she moved. And the funniest thing happened is that when she was standing there, she sort of had this. You know, she posed. She presented. She told me what she was doing. She presented herself. But when she started walking, she was so un- at, not in her body. She was ungainly. She was clunky. She was just moving with some real, it was almost masculine energy, you know, square shoulders. She wasn't fluid. And that was a turn off. Now, at the time, I didn't realize what was going on for me because I didn't realize what feminine masculine energy was in a woman. Now I know very well. Hmm. And so that, that energy that, that she was, like when people are so ecstatic, they can look like one thing, like a picture. But when they're in video or moving, you get to know a lot more about who somebody is, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this something is, true. is definitely is less about the age and more about who are this, who is this person. And kind of sort of like young. that initial connection that you might have with them, like that initial yeah. attraction. That's really all you go off of. That's why I highly recommend it. 
but yeah. Well, the thing is also, you know, look at dating apps and the killing about the height, the height thing cracks me up too. You know, someone's 5'10 or 5'6 or 5'4, whatever that is, male or female. But when meeting them in real life, you don't go, hmm, how tall are they? Right. You yeah, might go, can yeah. I see, can I look into their eyes or are they looking after them, down them? That sort of thing, that can't, that's relevant. But the numbers yeah. don't make sense. So having a dating app that is not putting you in small five-year span buckets, for example, I think mm. would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah, because it makes it too easy to filter out what you don't right. want and all that right. stuff. And that, that makes it the, the whole thing more superficial. I do like that you said that you, you're kind of sort of dating someone that you met in a Facebook group, because that's kind of one of the places online that I think is a great opportunity to meet people because if you're in a group, you share an interest. And if you start posting and commenting on things and they happen to be single, great. You can possibly meet someone. And it, it, it's not even about your, your height or anything. It's about the words that you're putting and possibly a connection that you're making on this in this group because you have this shared interest. So I'm glad that you mentioned that earlier that you are dating someone that you met in a Facebook group where you share a common interest. So at least you have that. And that is to me much better than an app, but apps are not going away. So I'm glad you're no. mentioning alternatives <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Well, Maybe. Also, well, well, just to answer that piece for a second, you know, Facebook, one of the things about Facebook that's great is that you get to know somebody's life through the app. So if you meet somebody in the Facebook group, you can check out, okay, so how many friends do we have in common? Who do I know that they know? Maybe I can even ask them questions. You can do your own yeah. quick research, due diligence, so to speak. Yeah. And, and it's interesting, you know, because I have a couple, I, well, I have quite a few matchmaking friends. And one of my friends who I've been, a friend, been friends with for a long time, she's been matchmaking since the 70s, I think. I mean, forever. She has these, these biannual um, meetups for her as clients and friends. So that's like an intentional dating arena mm -hmm. <laughs> where you get to meet people who you know are available. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's going to be harder because now you're confronted by this possibility of meeting somebody right in front of you. You know, so sometimes it's dating apps can be safer. <laughs> yeah, that's why I created the singles group on Facebook because I wanted uh -huh. to give people a space to meet. A lot of people are open to dating long distance now. To be fair, most of the people in the group are in California somewhere. But, you know, I have a team that's trying to find singles to add to the group, but it gives that opportunity for one, I have to put rules and parameters around things. I allow people to report other users yes. for one. Yes. And I see a lot of single group Facebook groups that don't allow that. I wanted to make sure that people were feeling safe in the space and Women were not asking for money because that happens to a lot of men on dating sites right now is that they're getting asked for money. And it happened once in the group. She got reported. I gave her one warning and she hasn't done it since. So I, I think doing something like the Facebook group, like you said, for one, you get to kind of do a little research about them and see who they are, see if you have mutual friends. And you get to see them interact before you necessarily reach out to say like, hey, I'd like to get to know you privately. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the new face of dating. I don't know. Maybe. Well, it was, the dating, <laughs> it was the Facebook dating app for a while. I, not, I didn't see it, but it was out there. Oh, it's still there, but people hate oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because what, the group so or Facebook? Facebook has its own dating app. Um, act, oh, its own that dating. crap thing. I've mm -hmm. seen that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So Barry, tell me, I'm, I'm curious. I would love to know what your type is. I mean, we kind of got the idea a little bit, but like right. share with us what your ideal partner would be like. It, it's fluctuated a little bit, but it's centered around, again, inner work first, because I'm so, I've been, I've been in the personal development field since the mid eighties. So I've been doing seminars, workshops, tape, teaching, sense of master in spiritual psychology, all this stuff. So being with somebody who's not done any work is really going to be an interesting conversation because I'm going to sit there going, you know, I can't say anything because I know, you know, we see see what's patterns just displayed in front of me. Mm -hmm. It's hard not to say something. So somebody's done their own work is the key. Um, also a woman who takes care of herself. I'm, I'm not a vegan or a, or a green drink drinker type thing. I do. Eat, I am an omnivore, but if someone who takes care of themselves help in their way for their personal health, because I intend to live a long, healthy life. And be with somebody who takes care of themselves too. That's the other part, by the way. The dating apps, women who are in the in the um, upper years, a lot of them have really not taken care of themselves. You know, one in one in twenty was maybe a fitness person with the youngest. So they're in fairly good shape. 
but so many of them look like they look matronly almost, which isn't a very attractive look. You know, it's funny you mention it because I think we've had a conversation about it and I don't want to drag anyone, but I always found it very interesting in the heterosexual world where at a certain point, especially a man with a woman, there is a point in the relationship after she's had maybe two kids, maybe one or two kids, where he stops aging and automatically she looks like she's the mother of all of them. And I, it's such a weird, th- like, I don't, like, we've, we have mutual friends that at one point they looked young and vibrant, fast forward, like, a few years, they had two kids, the husband still looks like, I don't know, a preteen, basically, and she looks like she's all of their mother. And I see that happen, like, I don't know, it, I don't know if it is it because of childbirth that, that does that to women, I, I don't, I, it's I, just, I, it's, so, so let, me, I, let, me, let me speak to that. He's direct for a moment. I know plenty of women who are parents who've had kids who are now in the kids in their 20s, even where the woman looks like she never looks like she's amazing. So it's not a rule, first of all. However, I suspect that people, men and women, who are in the relationship, marriage, family, kids, etc., will choose who they think they are at certain points, and their body will start to reflect that. So a woman who's had a couple of kids may start to feel worn down matronly motherly because that's the maybe the wiring they have it's not and it's just a manifestation of what's going on in the I inside suspect so for, and for men sometimes men who especially don't take their part of the relationship fully with it maybe not being a good father or I should say a participant father may want to sort of pretend to be reclaiming the youth i mean the number of men you know buy the sports car in their 40s because they want to reclaim their youth it's ridiculous it's yeah, yeah. So yeah. it manifests its ways in different. So that's probably why the men usually look so young Maybe. because they're still chasing their youth. And then I guess the wife is like, I am so fucking tired of all of these people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where self-care really plays in as well. There are a lot of women out there, especially moms who forget to take care of their self-care needs. You yeah. know, they're taking care of the kids, they're taking care of the husband because they feel like that is their role, but they forget to take care of themselves. And that's gonna show on your face, your skin, mm-hmm. your wrinkles, the gray hair, if you let that come your in. Body posture you, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. or if you just stop, like you said, taking care of your health, meaning you're not eating healthy. You're eating fast food now. Your kids Every like day, mac and cheese yeah. and hot dogs. So you eat the same as them. And now Mm-mm-mm. you're not healthy from the inside out. Right. It is so important because, I, you know, I think culturally a lot of, as an American culture, I think um, a lot of people suffer from this. I don't think it's just women. It's definitely men too. Cause there's a lot of, in the gay community, no diss to anyone. I think bears are sexy as hell. There's nothing sexier than a big, tall man that you could just curl up next to. But we can't ignore the fact that there's also a lot of high cholesterol. There's a lot of high blood pressure, diabetes, a lot of these, a lot of these ailments that could be avoided, but we are embracing the body positivity, which is wonderful, but it does come with all these other things that are dragging down our health. And I do personally think sometimes that when people allow themselves to grow so um, hefty, I guess, I don't know. Um, it's a manifestation of what's happening on the inside. I've always felt that because I feel like the healthier I get is only because inside I'm making the choice to be um, proactive about something instead of reactive Absolutely. about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, funny you say that word. I mentioned I've got a new program I'm launching called No Strings Attached, which is about moving from reaction to response. So yeah. that's, uh, that's part of my work now because so many of us have been in the codependent frame because we're always reacting to what happens around us. Yeah, we learn to take choice and dominion over our choices so we can be responsive instead. It changes the paradigm. Yeah, and, and speak to earlier we said about the the internal. Um, reality being replaced by outside experience through my master's program it talks about this that basically the, the physical mental and emotional levels of life are all connected so when you mm-hmm. move one paradigm the other two have to move as well or it won't work yeah. and weight release was the thing they did back in the 80s 90s most of the weight release programs like jenny craig weight watchers etc they discovered when when people went through and lost significant amounts of weight they would put it back but it's like 95 percent of them put the weight back on within five years 
because what happened was taking the weight off exposed all the emotional mental baggage that the weight was tied to mm -hmm. so when they lost the weight and didn't deal with the um sexual abuse or with or abandonment issues or other upsets they were carrying when they were a kid that put the weight on in the first place when they resolve that the weight doesn't come back mm -hmm. but that's the thing is knowing that all three levels must be worked on at the same time so yes doing the inner work is key because many people mm -hmm. work on the outside to present as I said way back at the beginning of the conversation but the inner life doesn't match that yeah now that being said in you the experience you said you've had off of all of these women that you've met on these dating apps and one out of 20 having this mentality what what do you think you might do differently in the future to increase your odds i mean i know you're already dating someone so let's not jinx that but <laughs> um like what ideas have you had to increase your odds in the future considering all the factors well first of all this is something i have to learn for myself is that i i really enjoy who i am as a person individually in my life which is one of the keys as well by the way um the the i can say this the relationship with myself and this I tell my clients this too is the relationship you have with yourself is more important than anything else and for me i've gone to the point thankfully where i can comfortably enjoy my life with or without somebody else in it yes being relationally wonderful but i'm not needing that to make my life work mm. and if we can all do that relationships get much easier because we're not so stressed about finding somebody there's a lot of people yeah. and that and again people again men women straight gay are looking for love versus being comfortable in their own skin and then being open. Uh, to yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I want to get back to what you're looking for. So we okay. determined that <laughs> you want somebody who's done the work. Yes. And somebody himself. who is health conscious because you want to live a long life with them. Mm -hmm. um, what about the rest of it? What about all those compatibility needs? Uh, do you need someone that you really want to travel with or go to baseball well, games with or what's what's your thing <laughs> yeah what is um, what's your thing so some i love somebody who wants to just have to get out in life and enjoy life itself i'm not a big fan of water sports myself personally but hiking biking um going for walks definitely something i love doing um entertainment she, she must like chocolate because that's one of my things mm. and so <laughs> i'm i'm a science fiction ad addict so being someone who enjoys that stuff as well would be great or at least gives me grace for that. I'm not a big patron of the arts, so that's not a big thing for me. So I don't worry about art and theater as much, although I'm open to exploring it. Um, sp somebody who's spiritually based, not religious based, that's a big shift. Mm. Because I, I, coming from a Jewish background, Christianity is always alien to me anyway, because mm -hmm. the whole Jesus thing was never part of my understanding. Mm -hmm. So because now I'm on a spiritual path, I understand that piece now too, but it's a much more holistic view. And for me, most people who have a religious teaching is more an exclusive view. Yeah. So those, those are pieces too. Um, she may already have kids. That's fine with me. I've been in a relationship with women who have kids and that's totally fine with me. Um, I'm not attached. I, I don't really feel like having kids of my own at this point. Because the thing is, when they're 20 years, you know, when I'm 20 years old and they're 20 years old, I may be a bit too old for them. So that's the, <laughs> if, they're, if, they're, if they've already got kids, they're adults, it's fine. Um, if she's been divorced, that's fine too. Definitely not in relationship. You know, she's still married. Not, don't do that until she's completely clean over right. with. That's a clear one too, because there are people on the dating apps who say separated, not divorced. <laughs> and they'd okay. be full on married still. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I, don't, I don't pick to find out. <laughs> you know? um, and someone who really wants to make a commitment to a healthy relationship. I mean, you're not asking for much. It really isn't asking for much. <laughs> I it, mean, it, it is and it isn't because some things I'm asking for are big hurdles for some people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see the spirituality thing being a big hurdle, especially in this country where there's so much extreme faith going on, whatever it is. I mean, so, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. so let me ask you let's get, let's pop back into the dating app so the sure. dating apps are not working super well for you mm -hmm. are you a are swiper other... by the way am i a swiper yeah like you because I, I was standing next to this like a bumble or a tinder or yeah 
this guy, like, he was, like, in his 50, a white guy, and he had, had this, his, he was just swiping through all the girls, swiping yes, and, of course, the young girls, and knowing all the, the, the older ladies. I was just, like, how interesting. This new world is, I mean, gay men do it, too. <laughs> but you're, you're just there, like, waiting for time to pass off. Huh? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. It's, like, are you a swiper? I don't think I'm a swiper per se, but I do definitely swipe through the apps because I do apps, apps that do have that built in, like Bumble and so on. Mm-hmm. The thing about Bumble, and I, one of my friends who's a matchmaker loves Bumble because it puts the power in the women's court, so to speak. Oh, man. And she says the best, and this is one thing she gives us advice, by the way, so I'm giving her information out this way, is for women, for men who are on, the, on Bumble, the best thing for a man to do when he likes somebody in the app is to extend the time because there's a fixed time limit in Bumble, you got to actually ask to extend it. Right. Because that lets the woman know you're interested. So that's so true. You know, so, what women, what she tells the women is to make sure the man extends the time because that implies he's interested. Because Bumble's an interesting app. It's different from some of the other ones. It's got some glitches too, but it's got some benefits. And I, I like that because it's more, it has a bit of a higher bar, a bit more vetting involved. Yeah, I'm on a few, I'm on Hinge and a couple of apps too. And some mm-hmm. of the apps, work really well and some apps don't work at all for me mm. so yeah comfortable so it's for almost like you're trying to yeah it, our Kane, for Kanan and our listeners who don't know all of the apps okay yeah. bumble is a little different because it is a swiping app similar to tinder but the woman has to make the first move right so once you have a mutual match as a man you can't message her no. She has to message you first or the um, connection expires after 24 hours. You have the option to extend it for another 24 hours, which tells her then that you are indeed very much interested and you were just swiping right to see what lands. Oh, I like that. Because well, the, the person who started Bumble is a woman who left Tinder. So she took right. so Tinder and made it better was the plan. So, yeah. Now, Barry, let me ask you this. Speaking Please. of Bumble, I would love to know your opinion on this because as a professional, I find an issue with Bumble as I'm trying to coach women through who are taking the lead, but don't want to continue to have the lead. They want to step back and allow him to step right. up. And sometimes these men on Bumble are not stepping up to the plate and asking her out. What are your thoughts about that? So let me go back to ancient times for a moment to come forward again, is I've had this conversation a long time, it sounds about the dropped handkerchief. Because back in the olden days, when a woman- <laughs> dropped would, handkerchief, I love that one. <laughs> well, that, well, that was the thing about back in the old days, a woman would drop a handkerchief for the man to let her and him know she was interested. So she would initiate, she would lead. Right. But then he would pick up the handkerchief if he was interested in reverse, mm-hmm. give it back to her to then take over. Mm-hmm. And that's what- I want to do that. That's Isn't the Bumble. modern one the pen or pencil? Like back in the nineties, you would drop your pen or you drop your pencil around Something. someone, and they pick it up. They're like, "Hey, you dropped this. Oh, thank you so much. What is your name? <laughs> you know." Kind well, of sort of. Right. So, so back to Bumble, the idea of the fact that women has to lead the first communication is kind of that drops handkerchief, but it is up to the man to make sure that, to lead from that point forward. Yes, the conversation can go both ways. But if he's not initiating conversation, or at least not just answering her questions and not asking his own questions, there's something missing there. Because she's having to initiate all the questions and he's not doing it. That's not working because that's her leading. So yeah. it's up to him to be the ones that are providing information and asking questions so she can respond. That way he takes over leadership. Then he initiates mm-hmm. like, you know, you want to talk first, get together, whatever that is. But the thing with any of the apps, it requires a different mindset and for most men they think swiping is all they need to do and it's not enough i was going to ask do you think a lot of men is this why women are having a hard time i mean i'm just i don't really know but do you think that might be why some people say they're having such a hard time dating is because men don't take the initiative like they used to i mean we are living in a world now that's post me too that's very um you need to get consent first do you think men are maybe afraid to be too forward and they are want they're allowing the woman a space to make all the first moves and maybe this is inadvertently creating this kind of uh, chaotic thing that's happening i would say definitely the me too conversation has shifted things for a bit and for some men especially the sensitive men they become more cautious because they don't want to have 
the accusations run against them that they're contributing to Me Too. Mm-hmm. They're also the men who don't even know what Me Too is about. So they've got no clue and they're just doing whatever they were doing. Some women like that, yeah. most women don't. So the challenge is definitely, things have evolved, definitely. And the dating platform, the way I describe it in a broader picture, the way I've described it for a long time is that we've had this evolution over the last 70 years since the 60s. Because back in the late 50s, early 60s, women didn't even have you know, freedom to decide what they want to do. They stayed at home till the man sure. courted them from the house, then basically got, then got, you know, courted her, wedded her, moved to his, his house. I mean, women didn't have, didn't have credit cards until 1971. So we've only been getting slowly getting up to speed. And so what women did when the sexual revolution happened in the 60s, the you know, way we call it women's liberation, feminist movement, sexual revolution, women basically got the right to choose for themselves. They got to be independent. They got to get their own jobs, have their own apartments, get their own cars, have independence. And so dating in the 80s and 90s was very much about like negotiating or fighting for rights. Women would lead, men would lead, it would be a dance. We now come beyond that to what one of my teachers calls moving from codependence to independence to interdependence, which is where we provide a place where the man leads, but the woman doesn't just follow. Woman takes her role in the relationship. And as far as I can tell, the dating apps aren't built to support that energetic. So we're still growing to the place of how do we dance? And frankly, the best thing to do with a dating app is once you meet some of the dating app, get off the app as quick as you can. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you got to meet right away. No like well, back and forth but, conversations. Oh my so, God, so it goes before, on forever. But before you get there, here's the thing. This is because especially what's been happening the last several years because of one with COVID, also because of the scammers out there, as you were talking about before, Andrea. The, the thing with the dating apps is if you can vet the person first, Ideally, an audio or video call, which most apps have built in now. You don't need to give your phone number out. Do that right away that, yeah. so you to make sure the person is real. Yeah. So the person who's behind the screen is the same person on the pictures, but also that you like the person. Once you've done that, then see about meeting the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing is, most of these um, apps are really amazingly simplistic in what they present. Mm-hmm. And so you can put a lot of belief, hope, fantasy into what you see on the screen. It doesn't match reality. Because so you can, been, it could go on forever. You can like, you could build a whole person before you even meet them. Yeah, and that's text, what texting. I've been guilty. Yeah. yeah. You should keep the texting down to like four or five texts until you get down to when can we talk? And then yeah. you build verbal talking, audio, a video, and then meeting. I love the idea that you just presented where like maybe like mixing Bumble where the person has like 24 hours to like respond or something like that. And then if they do respond, the next um cue would be a video call right away no more chatting no more texting you have to go on video and if you don't choose to go on video that person goes yeah. away and then you start yeah. all over again i think that would be a great process in defense for women <laughs> <laughs> please do please do <laughs> you guys take how long to get ready to be video ready Five minutes. Five minutes. Well, you make time for it. You have to know that. <laughs> you know how long this takes to get ready in the morning. <laughs> Again, careful, you make careful, time careful. for it. You can make, like, you could say, okay, five o'clock today. Right. I'm going to go on the dating app to see the guys that have messages. And maybe you can, there's a way you could schedule times. I don't know. But I like the idea of, I think we spend too much time, just like you said, texting and chatting yeah. because I remember when I first started to like date I used to meet guys on adamforadam.com this is a gay site and of course and like you spend like days texting and chatting mm-hmm. and by the time we decided to meet I like decided you are like a six foot two Adonis who's super masculine who's gonna pin me down and do dirty things to me and then we meet it's the complete opposite of that it's because (laughs) I spent all that time building up this fantasy we need to like Mm -hmm. like you said if you're not meeting in person at a bar or something you have to take the middleman of all this chatting out of it and then get right to it because it's that energy that you have to get to right away. I love that idea. Hopefully someone's listening and they can create it or we can. I feel like we just did. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So this is like an indirect patent in a way. So if someone like comes out with a like, uh, episode, blah, 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 blah. We created right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Royalties. Yeah. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Barry, this has been amazing. Um, for our listeners, Find his book on Amazon or on his website, uh, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. And 
I mean, you have been an amazing guest. I feel yes. like we need to talk about creating this app that we just designed. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> And until next time, keep dating smarter. Thank you for having me.